Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to the High Performance Reflections in aid of Temple Street Children's University Hospital. This week's guest is Declan Darcy. Declan is well known for his contributions and achievements as a Gaelic football player, coach and manager. As a player, Declan represented both Leitrim and Dublin. During his time with Leitrim, he captained the senior team to a Connacht Football Championship in 94, having already won a Connacht Under-21 Championship and four senior club titles between 89 and 94. After a return to his birthplace of Dublin, Declan went on to achieve more success at senior level with Dublin, winning a Leinster Championship in 2002, followed by Dublin and Leinster Club Championships in 2003. Following his successful playing career, Declan transitioned into football coaching and management, and together with Jim Gavin, led the Dublin Under-21s to Leinster and All-Ireland success in 2010 and 2012. In 2012, Declan was named alongside Gavin once again a selector of the Dublin senior football team, where he remained until the end of the 2009 season. During his time with the Dublin footballers, Declan played a key role in the management team that would go on to lead Dublin through a period of unprecedented provincial and national dominance, winning 25 major honours, including six All-Ireland senior titles, seven senior championships and five national leagues. Outside the world of GA, Declan's leadership skills extend into the building industry, where he operates in the role of CEO and founder of Darcy Bros Limited, a construction company with over 40 years of experience in residential building renovations and extensions. So with that, all there's left to do is to introduce the man himself. Declan, how are you? Hi, Peter. How are you? Thanks a million for coming on board today. I know your time is precious, so thanks a million for supporting us. So I suppose we might uh, we might jump into a few questions I have for you, if that's all right with you. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So the first one I have for you, Declan, is um, in terms of your maybe your playing and coaching career and, and business, if you like, also whatever whatever is relevant to you. Um, what does high performance look like for you? Um, it's I suppose it's a I suppose the question towards me would probably be drawn a lot towards sport and stuff like that. But for me, it's a uh, high performance. I kind of, I'm challenged a little bit by the high performance because it kind of suggests elitism, um, like inter-county football or international soccer. But for me, um, just people doing what they do really, really well with great energy and love and desire, I think, when that happens and when you see it and feel it and experience it, whether it's in a company that you're involved with or a company that you're working with or a team, I think it's very obvious um, when you're in that environment, uh, when you see the, when it's people involved in it functioning really, really well, effectively, but also you notice a desire, um, a love of who they're doing it with as well. And you can see the results then reflected that and how they're acting and I think that's really for me, and it could be anywhere you could see this um, operate. I suppose you're drawn to attention to a uh, sporting context for us, is obviously the Dublin football team. It was quite obvious um, when you watched them play, they loved what they did. They had a great desire for what they, they wanted. They were performing at a very, very high level, and possibly Leinster rugby. I'd also, I also really enjoyed um, the Japanese rugby team in the World Cup. I thought they were... You know, they were performing, they weren't, like, they weren't the best team, but they were performing really, really well as a group. I, I also love watching the um, Irish rugby on the 20 squad. There's just a massive desire um, and a connective to the maximum of what they are. Like, they necessary, might necessarily be the best teams, but they're performing to their best. And again, for me as well, I suppose people get fixated about winning. And to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that you got to win to be a really high performing team. You just got to do the best that you can do um, and doing it with people that you love and care. And I think that's very obvious uh, when you see these teams operating and watching them and enjoying that thing. And I suppose people that are in that environment, they can feel that of each other. And it's just a, it's a great place to be. And uh, I know just myself for being involved with the Dublin guys, we certainly, there was that, it was that uh, level. You could be experienced with, you know, club club level and, and uh, you know, you have ladies football and, and kids underage and stuff. Um, 
how important do you think high performance is in terms of, you know, as you said, enjoyment, fulfillment and, um, you know, doing, doing what you can to the best of your ability? I think it's massive, but I think the problem is that a lot of coaches and people are drawn to, to when, they, when they watch something, they're, they're drawn to the elite player, the player that's really, really good or the person that works in a work environment to be really good. But what I really, as a coach, what I really go after is trying to make people better and observing them getting better. Like I have a kid there, he's under 13 boys. Um, three or four years ago, uh, it's one of my biggest kind of, I champion it really well. He's, one of, he's a kid that, like he just looked completely lost four or five years ago. And if you looked at him, he'd say, he'd, actually wonder why he's actually playing the game but now he's one of our stronger players since to him but we didn't kind of um we didn't label we didn't label him but we just observed him and gave him every opportunity and it was wonderful to see um that and i got as much joy out of that as, as a kid just being able to allow himself to go on that journey and, and really and cherish it and love it as opposed to you know, the, the sort of guys that are char charging on, like, I mean, the elite, they want to be the best. But sometimes there's, there's great wins in just observing people um, evolving in that journey, uh, particularly people that you wouldn't expect to see. But I think there's ma I, I really enjoy that part. And it's the same in any part of life. You just see people just getting better and better and getting confident um, and getting a status for themselves. And I think it's really important that that, that, that is allowed to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't couldn't agree anymore. Um, and I suppose that that kind of leads us nicely into our next question, um, Declan. And in I suppose in terms of in terms of achieving that kind of high performance environment, in your view, what factors do you think are most important um, in maybe developing or maintaining that level of high performance? Um, well, there's a couple of key pieces for me. Uh, the environment needs to be really strong, um, and that's key. And when I talk when I talk about environment, I mean the physical environment, and then what also the emotional environment. So, when you go to a facility or a workplace, and that environment straight away, what it looks like, what it feels like, if it's energized, it'll make a difference to the the people that are going to function in it. So that's important. But then also the emotional side is, so how do people interact with each other and what way do they interact with each other? And I think when you get an environment where there's a lot of positivity, there's a lot of, uh, we're in this together, a lot of communication, a positive communication, then people begin to feel a belonging and then a bit of care about what they're doing and who they're representing. And then they are energized and then that's reflected in performance people are, are prepared to go that extra yard when they care about something or environment for me would be the, one of the key pieces uh, and what does that look like from a physical and an emotional point of view and i think then you get into the piece where the communication piece and how people interact with each other is really important and taking the time to care for me is to take the just having a 10 minute conversation with someone and just genuinely trying to find out a little bit more about them. And then obviously they sense that care and to me, they'll give that care back in some way. So I think it's more of them kind of uh, conversations and really, really kind of solidifies a connectiveness and, and, and then a sense of belonging. And then again, it's the why about everything that you do. So. Oh, actually, why am I working here? Why am I playing for this team? And then you begin to delve into a little bit more. And when guys or girls begin to figure out, well, why am I actually playing on this team? And what does it mean to me? I think it gets very powerful when people get a sense of that. Um, and that's really important to me. And then we go back into, this, there's no kind of easy, sometimes people look for easy solutions. Hard work is just the bedrock as well. You've got to be prepared to work hard. Um, and that leads into then preparation um, and what that look like and how much you put into it and care about what you do um, and then 
I just love a little bit of the, that going back to the environment piece, important to me is that neutral, I call it neutral mindset. So everything that you experience is an event. So I would have a firm believer in coaching that, particularly in a football context and even in a work context, everything that happens um, on the football field, let's say, just give an example, is an event. Um, and every player should look at it and coach should look at each event that happens as an event. But what can we learn from that? Uh, and sometimes you we can get caught up with, and, and most coaches will get caught up with a negative connotation in the field and get frustrated, which leads on to the player getting frustrated and getting agitated, beating themselves up and drifting for them. For, and don't forget, it can easily happen with something good. So let's say a player scores a goal, gets emotionally distracted, gets up on a high, and then for the next couple of minutes can't function correctly. So to me, everything we, I would look at would be in a neutral context. So that just an event and what can I learn from it? And how can I respond to the next action that's going to happen? And particularly in the field of sport, um, it's really important. I think Conor Callaghan's goal first, um, I think it was 2018 All-Ireland Final against Mayo, very young player, coming into big occasion, his first big occasion, and he gets a ball after first play. And Clark is a fantastic keeper, but his position coming out has always been, he comes out like a starfish, if no one knows anything about the goalkeeping thing. But his left leg is always slightly higher than his right leg. So we had prepped Con to say, like, and all the players, his weak spot was his left leg, just roll the ball under his left leg, slightly, it'll be slightly high. And he executes because his mindset is completely fixated on he's able to fu- function really well because he's clear and taught. It presents itself, he sees it, and he acts on it. But the most impressive bit of that is the reaction afterwards. He doesn't go to the hill for a young kid to play for Dublin in an all Ireland final. He's straight into the next play, which is the kick out against. And that's kind of, to me, would be an example of that neutral mindset, he experienced something, he's seen it, but he was able to, because his mindset was fixated, he didn't get caught emotionally, he just knew what he had to do in the next play, and that's where his mind was. And then that begins to layer upon layer in every event in the game. It becomes very, very impressive, and then guys or girls can function really well because they're applying themselves to the next play, and they're not drifting or beating themselves up because something good or bad happened to them. They're just they're focused on the next play and what way they can actually uh, act, which is important. Yeah, absolutely. And great insight, I suppose, in terms of, of that one moment that that um, kind of, you know, describes, describes you know, high performance or an aspect of high performance. I think the thing that stands out for me, Declan, there is, is the level of detail and planning that must have went into, you know, that 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 aspect or that one situation and I suppose ultimately planning has to be a huge or preparation even maybe is the better word for it must be a huge component of, of high performance consistently. Oh well like absolutely I think there's no denying it the hard work the preparation um, and what you're preparing for like the difference for me is as well, like you need a smart application to what you're doing is really important. So a lot of guys can spend a lot of time and hours looking at something that could be wasting their time, but the, the really good players figure it out really quickly as where they need to look to and what's going to make a difference for them. And I think as well from a coach point of view as well, to direct players to where that needs to be for them so that they're getting effective preparation done. So when is it actually going to really matter when it makes, and if they can see it and feel it themselves in the preparation piece, and then when it falls into place, it's really permanent. And again, with layers and layers of learning, again, they're constantly trying to get better. I think there was never a con- never a day when we came into a Dublin dress and we said, yeah, we've, we've done it. Like, there was never. There was just, well, it hasn't come in and they go, like, I just want to try that again. I want to do that again. It just, it was just a, great environment. It was never a day where they clapped themselves in the back. It was always about, just love to go out there again. I'd love to have that go at that again. I'd love to try that again. If I did that came again on top of me, I don't know what I'd do, but I'd, know, I'd love to have another go at it. And that became really, really powerful for us as a group, you know. 
yeah absolutely absolutely i can only imagine um a lot of our guests listening will will dream of dream of that situation or that environment someday but um i suppose you know the main point i suppose to take from it is as you said is that you know high performance can be achieved in in any walk of life or in any team it doesn't necessarily have to be you know that that huge successful drive that you know you were lucky to have or you 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 know you made for, effectively you made for yourselves but um you know that it's it's the small things really that build up high performance as a collective i think so and i think the problem is that people are fixated by winning that winning just because you have a trophy in your hand you, you seem to have succeeded. But I, when I'm looking at other teams playing, and I, I get, and they might not have the cup at the end of the day, but I think they're actually performing at a high level. They're getting the very best out of themselves. And that, if you if you chase that and you're looking for that, I think there's huge rewards in that. Um, and you can see lots of teams that have, you know, I went to see Leitrim as a last year in the league final, uh, Division 4. The place was, it was, <laughs> it was supposed to be, 20,000, 30,000 Leitrim people. It was Division 4 football in perspective to, let's say, where Dublin was around. But the, the lads are out doing their very best on a national stage. And I thought there was winning in it. You know, like, I mean, it, they didn't get a cup at the end of it. But they were, I looked at them and they were giving their heart and soul to what they were doing. And they seemed to enjoy doing it with each other. And I thought, to me, there's much winning in that. But it, as, as I suppose from a sporting piece, we never champion that. It's always about the guy that gets to lift the cup or the girl that lifts the cup. They're the winners. But for me, as a coach, there's as much I'm watching and observing players performing. Like Andy Morn for uh, in his late years at Mayo, and I'm going like he's like he's performing at a higher level than probably he should be, and I'm going like there's winning in that. He didn't come away with the Sam Maguire, which he probably wanted to, but there was huge winning in what he achieved himself so there's there's lots of way in perspective of what looking at it but i think unfortunately with underage and stuff like that the definition of success is winning but i totally disagree with that i think there's a lot more wins that you can see and observe by a lot of people and players and teams but they're just not championed enough and i think that's probably a little bit of that what i kind of annoys me a little bit about sport at the minute and I'd like to see a little bit more um, level playing field, not level playing field, but a bit more um, kind of rewards for guys that actually do well. Mightn't end up at the cup at the end of the day, but still they are performing at a very high level, the best that they can perform at and that needs to be acknowledged as well. Yeah, absolutely. Completely, completely agree with you. Um, so I suppose we might move on to um, the next question, just conscious of your time. And uh, I, there's a couple of questions here. I know our, our guests will, will get as much value as the first two. So I'm, uh, we'll, get, I'll get, we'll do our best to get through them. So the next question I have for you, Declan, um, is maybe a little change in direction a little bit. Um, and that is, how important has reflection been for you um, through your through your career of, you know, again, be it player or coaching, whatever, whatever sits with you? Um, I suppose the COVID has probably stopped me in my tracks a little bit to allow me to, to take a breath. Um, I played into county football for 14 years, senior level, and I've been coaching for 12. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of my lifetime involved at a high level. Um, and that's not including club football and stuff like that and coaching so it's a big part of my life and sometimes it can that journey can it just can be become a journey without actually knowing where you're going you're on a you're in the, you're on the fast lane and it's dragging you along and it's a wonderful like I can't like I mean I've had a wonderful experience between going to Leitrim and then Dublin so I've had a massive massive journey but it has time it was no harm that I, it happened the way it did because it just took a little bit of time to think and talk to people around me and to what mattered. I was fortunate to bring my kids to the first national round of the league against Kerry and Crow Park. It was the first time actually I brought my kids to a GA match and it was kind of like a big moment for me that I kind of underestimated because I didn't, I kind of, I couldn't believe it when I actually thought about it that that's, that, that's what's after happening here that I wasn't able to go to a match with me with Oshin, the young fella, and um, 
they're the little things that kind of as well are important that life balance piece is very important uh, while you're chasing certain dreams and you know there, there's other things that matter in life as well and sport is great um, but sometimes it can consume you a little bit and you can get caught up in a bubble that you don't seem to think and whatever the GA is it's kind of very hard to say <laughs> say no sometimes to things but the life balance piece is really really important um, and you have to have a perspective on it I suppose the last um, couple of months has given me a lot of time to think about that. But I've embraced that time away. And for me as a coach, um, it was the beauty of being involved in Dublin, that environment. And what it taught me was that you'd never rest. So I, the minute I stopped, I straight away, I was in contact with Liam Hennessy down, Larry Ruby Tainan, great coach. Um, he's at Santa College. So straight away, I was on to him about how can I get better? How can I, how can I, how can I get, how can I evolve? Um, and straight away I've been connecting up with other coaches from other sports right round. I'm lucky enough I'm living in Sandy Mount, so I'm in the bedrock of rugby, but Andy Farrell is living in Sandy Mount, Leo Cullen's living in Elm Red, and there's there's lots of people that um you can connect up with um to get better. And I've hooked up with Bernard Jackman as well. So he has me on Zoom calls to coaches, rugby coaches around the world every week, and I love it. Um, and it's given me time to to just take a step back and to see where I'm going uh, personally, but I'm learning and I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of uh, really kind of trying to understand what worked really well for us. And again, in the Dublin context, we never chased winning. Winning wasn't what, what like at the end of the day, people would see us with the Sam McGuire, but that's not what the agenda was. We, what really was about us was kind of just, making the very best of the opportunities, respecting them, respecting the talents that was within the team, respecting the talents that was in the coaching group, to give it every everything that we could and make the most of what we had. And we were fortunate then to be able to produce a win at the end of it. But we would only see that as a piece of luck, really. Um, but the fun was the journey. And that was really what we kind of really enjoyed. And we, that's the understanding the why we did it. Um, in our context and that's what became very very powerful so on reflecting on that I kind of thought there was huge learnings for me and I'd like to share them learnings possibly with other people to because I'd hate to think that what we've done would be missed um, a lot of people reflect on negativity so they'll only kind of do a root canal review of when something bad happens but you very rarely see something kind of when something really positive happens, like this Dublin team. Um, and it's not that they won five in a row; it was just the way they played the game, the way they interacted with people off the field. There was there was massive learnings for people to understand that. And uh, I think I'd like to think that possibly that you know I'd like to share to other people, like in some way that I felt it, but give it to other people to see could they take some the good parts out of that and made me make a difference to their team, their players, their work environment, and, and uh, to make that as fun and uh, as fun a journey as we had, you know, and I think that's important to me, and that reflection piece has given me lots of insights into just uh, seeing how that was, and just being a privilege to being part of that journey, because I think if the journey had to keep going, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to just pinch myself and say, well, what's have to actually happen here, but it's wonderful. It's just been fantastic. Like, like the lads are like ring my father, you know, and I'm out with the group now for six months and Brian Fenton, and Johnny Cooper ring my dad just to, to hook up and ask him, how's he getting on? Like there are things that, you know, are such a value piece to making these, these, these guys that have gone through this are better people for what, for being through this system um, and through that environment. And that's what impresses me so much. And I'm, you know, it's, it's just magic to see little things like that happening. Um, and I think it's so important to me to see that as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite striking to hear that, you know, the, you know, the human side of, of, of that group, you know, in terms of how you, how you carried yourselves, I suppose. What I, what I always had a question. I suppose I'm, I'm conscious of the, uh, 
the guests that are probably listening in will listen into this and say, Peter, you have to ask them more questions about the Dublin team. How do they do it? But um, I suppose the thing that, that jumps out for me that I've always been curious about in terms of reflection is I'm pretty sure if, if I have the numbers right, you know, I think it was 28 championship games and you lost one of them 28 games. And I suppose I always wondered myself, you know, was it a constant reflection um, process in terms of changing it up or bettering things or never been caught doing the same thing each season? Or was there was there any of that going on in terms of maybe live reflection? I think the real important thing that I would say is that we got to know the players. So if you don't get to know the players, I or unless you're a workforce, or particularly players, let's say the Dublin players, if you don't get to know them, you can't really coach them. You can't make them better. So you've got to know your, who you're working with. And you've got to really know. And you've got to listen to them. A lot of coaches, I feel, sometimes force their will upon players and then play to a system. Whereas we would be the complete opposite. We would facilitate. I, we would create pathways. And then the players would take ownership of that. They would feel that ownership. And then they'd be allowed to dictate how that's going to pan out we can't make them just make good decisions they can only make them decisions themselves but if we put them in a place where uh, they can feel they're part, they're taking ownership of that and they're then begin to drive uh, the team well then it becomes a very very effective and I think there's one great credit to this team is that that's what they did they took ownership we allowed that ownership to take place they were a fantastic group of players very smart and intelligent guys that were well capable of taking that in and driving it on and that's what they did and I think well, like I mean I can't I can't say it enough about I know I suppose that you're kind of that reflection piece and everything but every year you come into the group and you'd feel the energy for them and it was the love of what they did and who they did it with that gave you the energy to go off and try and think is there anything like we could make these guys better there was never there was never a dull moment with this group that was the mad that was just fantastic like you were just always itching to try and do things, probe, trying to get better. But that was led a lot from the players as well. They were never at any stage saying, we've made it, we've done it. It was always just respecting the ability that they had, respecting the group they were involved with, and always trying to just to make the very best of what they had. And I think that was just, it was just brilliant. And there's just, there's every one of them were leaders, like you, Stephen Clarkson coming up, training two hours before a session, last man off the pitch, setting high standards. Just to a man, every one of them was kind of energising the group and driving it on. And it was just, again, that environment goes back to that environment. And I suppose the coaches, Jim was massive on that and allowing that. We would always call ourselves facilitators. We'd never say we're coaches or managers. We're just facilitating the needs of the players. Um, and we were there to help them as best we can. And you'd see us operating as well after a match. It was never about, you'd never see Jim jumping around after a match or myself or Jason. It was just a backward step because we were very, we knew exactly where we stood in the group. And it was the, all about the players and, and to allow them just to be the best they could be. And what could we do to, to help them in any way? And I think they sensed that care from us and that work ethic from us to serve the players. Um, and I think that, reflected really well um, in how they acted both on and off the field. Um, and again, I think when you look at this team, the players involved, there's as much wins off the field and how they act and interact with people as, as they are on the field. They're just fantastic guys. And anybody that comes across them would say that, just how they carry themselves. It's just it's equally as impressive as, as what they do in the field. Yeah, it's uh, it's great great to hear that, and I suppose you know, um, these are you know my my opinion I suppose would be that you know these are all the outcomes separate from winning you know all these 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 good things that come out so off the field you know and and the personal side of things you know come from you know that environment as you said you know create that environment and 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 watch the watch it watch it grow effectively is is kind of what i'm hearing from from what you had yes yeah, very important and then it's again understanding the why who they're representing and why they're representing and i think it's not about the individual and i think sometimes in county football 
a lot of players come along a journey. They're probably the top player in their club. They win a lot of matches on their own. And then they're put into an environment where it's 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 all about it has to be about the team. But sometimes it's very hard to change that mindset when you're a really good footballer. And you'd often see a player coming from a slightly weaker club, a dominant for 15 years of his life, and then he's coming in to a senior setup, and all of a sudden he has to change his game to pass the ball to be part of a team. You know, and it's it's a challenge for a lot of players, but at the same time, it has to be about the team, and everybody has to understand their work to the team and that is all it is it's no more than that it cannot be about the individual and um, it has to be what i can what can i do to make this team a better team and what can i do to make my teammate a better teammate and and when you get that kind of uh, communication and language between the players and then they're going to understanding that piece and um, then they know when they go to battle that everybody has each other's back and I think that trust piece then becomes really, really strong. That connection between the players, the management, it's very powerful. And you can see when uh, this Dublin team got challenged and they got when we did get really challenged, um, and that's when the real test comes of a team. It's when that challenge and everything is going against you and nothing seems to be going right, how do you function in them key moments? And I think... It's certainly for me one of the great delights is probably that last 10 minutes, the strong game against Kerry. It's just, it doesn't seem to be, it could have easily just, the lads could have just put their hands up and said, we had enough of this. We have, we have what we have. And we just, but they didn't, they just, they just kept functioning. And it was just brilliant to watch. They had each other's back and it just kept, they were so driven and so, it was just a magic uh, piece, but it was a, a real test of a team. It's just when that, Everything's going against them. Uh, can you still deliver? And that was, to me, that was probably one of the best uh, 10 minutes of football was that last 10 minutes in that All-Ireland uh, drawing game last year. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, for everyone except maybe a Kerry man. But, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was great. It was great to see it. Um, you know, and from a, from a high performance point of view, absolutely, it was, it was intriguing to watch as, you know, have been the six or seven years before that. But, I suppose again, conscious of time, I could easily sit here and listen to you for for a lot longer than the time slot. So I'll move on um, to a nice, maybe a nice addition to that. What we've been talking about, and that I suppose the question I have for you next, um, Declan, is, you know, I suppose you've talked a lot about the high performance and the different factors in there, and you know what's important about it. Um, and I, maybe a few of our listeners might be thinking to themselves, well, you know. You know, it's it's all well and good knowing that, but how do you how do you learn it um, to be able to implement it? So I suppose the first the, the next question I have for you is in terms of resources, um, you know, to, to learn about these things and maybe to to develop and and continue to improve in terms of high performance. Is there any particular resources that you could recommend or that have been useful to you? I think uh, for me. Um... One of the key things for me is uh, the ability to to watch and listen. Um, I think that's important, and I think I think coaches can sometimes get caught up in a busy environment. They're rushing to training, um, they're setting up drills. They're kind of it's. I know myself. It's it's frantic, and it can be. But I've seen a huge value to just taking a step back and just having conversations and listening. Um, listening to players so sometimes there's huge knowledge with the players that you have but sometimes you just don't take the time to actually engage with them have them conversations have a better understanding of your group and I think it's really important that if you have a really good understanding of your group then you can coach them better if you don't know your group you can't coach correctly you, you can you can but you can't in my head it's not really getting productive but once you get to know your group and what their needs are, and then you facilitate those needs, I think there's huge learning just being on that journey alone. And you kind of don't say you have it. You kind of allow the journey to take place. And as that journey is taking place, if you have that mindset of everything is learning, you learn along the way. And you have to accept that you're going to learn. And I think coaches sometimes, I have to have, you know, I have to have, or I'm, I have it, or this is the way, it, this is the way it's going to work. To me, it's, it's never a way. It, it, there's always learning. And you just, that journey 
And people miss that bit is just allowing that journey to take place. And that's the learning. Sometimes it's not, you don't have it in the beginning, but it's just allowing it to happen um, is a wonderful, uh, I think there's wonderful learnings in that. And I think it's something that's never put down in a book or something like that, but just that journey sometimes can be the, the little, the gold nuggets as you go along and the experiences you experience in game time training and just having conversations and learning about people. Um, but again, I would always kind of touch base with other coaches um, in every other sport, I would always be intrigued by what's going on in other environments and what makes them function. Um, big believer in uh, reading, um, lots of books. Um, I'm probably more drawn to decision-making, uh, probably from a coaching point of view, logical thinking and stuff like that. So lots of learning for me, and that's where I'm probably drawn to at the minute, just being at the white heat of battle, being able to think really clearly and logically and I think with our game the GA is a very passionate game it can be very easy to be drawn into emotion and sometimes I just don't think you make the right decisions when there's emotions involved so I'm very much drawn to the, the logical decision making process and what does that look like and how does it formulate so I'm big big into that webinars love them as I said to you I'm lucky enough to hook up with Jer Bernard Jackman he has me um, involved with uh, a WhatsApp group or webinars with coaches around the world from a rugby context and I'm sitting in listening to conversations about rugby but I'm learning um, my daughter's involved in hockey um, fantastic sport but again I'm intrigued by the tactics of hockey we hear about basketball being an impact on um, and Gaelic football in recent terms but hockey for me has very similar kind of traits and tactics I'm just intrigued by the coaches listening to their language how are they communicating from a tactical point of view? Is there any kind of gains that I can get from that? So again, it's listening and just taking the opportunity to try and find in my mind. See, I'm ne I, I never find my head, like you, you said something there at the beginning about what we won. And uh, it, it was fantastic. Like, I mean, in a minute, I think, oh, geez, that's fantastic. But for me, I never kind of think like that. I kind of, I just love the journey and I'm, I'm, I'm keen to learn. I'm, I'm very respectful for what I've gone through. Um, but I just want to respect that by learning more and then trying to pass on that knowledge if I can um, in any way like like the chat today so um, but Chica, yeah I think the listening if I was to kind of say one thing is probably listening and just be prepared to listening um, uh, and just and, and just allow things to happen as opposed to just forcing things to happen yeah yeah, absolutely. Great insight. And I think we've all been, including myself, I've no problem saying we've all been maybe victim of knowing the right way or, you know, knowing what's best maybe at times. And, um, you know, that piece, that piece is very powerful in terms of this, you know, the power of listening and the power of learning from from those who we maybe would think would be the last people we go to, you know, in terms of going to other sports or going to, going to you know people we don't even know um and you know that's there can be a lot of insight and value or unearthed in them in them little environments oh well absolutely and i actually got some of the not like i'm involved with ushin is under 13 in clan again but i learned as much <laughs> in his little four or five years of games than fellas if you come up to me and says um well, Declan, why did that happen you know what I mean? We're after getting beaten by a team. And he's saying to me, and it's this little eight-year-old saying, how did that, why did that happen? Why did they beat us by so much? You, you're involved with the Dublin team. You should know all this. And I'm going, I'm trying to figure it out in my head, actually, how did that, how did that happen in an under eight game? But it's just, I kind of, you know, I just love that. Um, I love that kind of journey and just every little bit. In my head, as I said, yeah, don't look, you know, I'm watching the underage games. It doesn't really matter to me whether we win or lose the game. I'm just watching the kids and how they're performing and just trying to understand them. And then if I'm watching them, I kind of get a feeling then I can have a conversation with them afterwards to maybe give them a little tip here and there to make them better. I'm not fixated about winning, but I'm just fixated about how they're, why they're doing it and why did they respond to the situation and the frustrations. And probably one of the things is most players beat themselves up and to try and get them out of that bubble of constantly beating themselves up because most most players do that and then the coaches then your observations is that labeling of players which i hate you know 
everybody kind of, oh, he's that type of player or she's that type of player. Or, she's brilliant. She's no good. He's, you know, I hate that. Like, every player is a player. They all have strengths and weaknesses. And to me, I look at them, every one of them, once they're in your environment, you have a responsibility to make them as best as you can, all of them together, not just the good players. You know, and everybody's drawn to the good players. I can see that. But there's a responsibility for you that when you have someone in your care, you don't label them in any way or good or bad. You are there to make them as good as you can make them and make them better, make them better players and make them better people. And I think that's, that's, that's a really important piece as well from a coaching context is that, that danger of labeling is, 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 I feel it's a bit of a trap door for coaches as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, definitely agree. And, uh, you know, again, that's that piece around bringing it back to underage and kid level, you know, can be so powerful in time, in terms of sometimes we can just overcomplicate it and think that's just because it's a senior team that we have to be, you know, at a different level altogether in terms of complexity. But yeah, no, it's great. It's great to hear that, Dex. And I think, um, I suppose. But just to, just to go back on that, you know, your very interesting point to talk about kids and, the, you know, the psychology of players and where they come from. And, you know, we're all in the garden kicking the ball around one day wondering, could we play in Crow Park or could we play with the Dublins or the Kerrys or, you know, the top teams. And I think that piece is missed sometimes. And I would always say to players is, what is your magic? So everybody has a little bit of magic. Um and it can be anything, like a cornerback or corner forward, midfielder. Just everybody has a little bit of magic. And everybody should be encouraged to let that magic show, particularly in game day. And that comes from your youthful, in that, you know, when that kid that you didn't care, you're kicking that ball around the garden. And that freedom to express yourself. But that needs to be encouraged as a coach. Not to make them, to put this process on them that doesn't, that they can... Yeah, they, they function, but they can't. people want to see magic. People want to see Jack McCarthy's, the Paul Mannions. You know, they want to see that excellence and that brilliance, that just little bit of divilment that you wouldn't normally see. And that needs to be encouraged from a coaching point of view as well. And I think I kind of go after that magic bit as really, really, and what does that look and how does that feel like for a player when he experiences? But the co- a coach needs to encourage that and he needs to you know, allow players to have that individual brilliance and to let it, and to encourage it. And if it doesn't come off, tell them to do it again. Like, and not say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, encourage them little bits of magic nuggets because that's what we all go to see. That's what we want to go and see the sport. Like, I enjoy watching teams that just have that freedom of spirit and trying things like the Japanese rugby team in the World Cup, just absolutely going for it. And the freedom, and you can see the coaches allow them to, have that that will of expression, and I think from a coach's, you know, you want to look in and see kids or players showing them magic and that energy, and and them them fueling themselves off that and the field of play. And it's just, I think that's really important as well to have that as well. And that kind of, I'd have my kind of challenges with defensive plays, and I'd wonder as a player, you know, and teams are playing thirteen behind the ball like what does it actually feel like to play in a game like that or to be involved like is that really motivational for them players to be involved in certain types of games like that or I, I don't know it's it's hard to know but I'd like just to be able to see uh, players perform and have that freedom of expression and chasing them little magic moments because when they happen on a field of play they're just breathtaking yeah absolutely absolutely completely agree with you um, so again, I think we've met the perfect storm here with two individuals that are would talk, you know, to the end of the day on this subject. So um, for your own for your own sake, Declan, I'm going to move on. Um, or otherwise, you'll be here with me all night. Um, so the next the next question I have for you is um, another one that's probably going to talk, provoke a lot of thought, but we'll give it a go anyway. What is the most important thing that you have learned from your career to date? Um, it's a that's that's a tough kind of and I've never really kind of taken the time to kind of reflect on that. But I, if there was one that jumped out at me, and it's something that I never really kind of, it was never labelled when I was playing myself because it was very macho environment. But care, 
I think is probably the biggest thing for me. Um, and just taking the time to care and show your care to other people and, and what you do. Uh, I think you get it back. It'll make you love the journey that you're on and appreciate what you're doing, being very respectful of the environment you're in and who you're representing. And I think it's a big one for me because, you know, at the end of the day, I meet some of the Dublin players and it's a hug, it's a handshake. It's not that we talk about what we won. It's about how we interacted with each other in that journey. It's the same with the kids in Clannagall. It ain't about the winning. It's about the journey and how what we've done for each other in that journey and how I made other players feel and maybe they made me feel. And I think they're the memories that you have in time when you look back. Um, and I know myself when I look back on teams that I played on, again, I don't look back and, oh, we won this and we won that. I just remember the memories I had, the company I had, the friendships I had, uh, the crack, uh, which is really important, the fun. And that's, to me, I think, is really important. And uh, I think care uh, is probably up there for me. And it's something that I would hold dear. I think I would obviously um, have a big uh, love for the Dublin lads at the minute because I had a big connection with them as they all have with each other. And it's a very reflective in how they play. Um, and it was very important for me. I had difficult times. I lost my sister um, at the start of the journey, which was a very difficult time for me personally. But the guys kind of, that's the great thing about the GA. And, and again, I'm not talking context. I'm not talking about just this Dublin team. I think it's just the GA world as well. And being lucky to be involved in any team is they look out for each other and that bond and that connection. And I think that's, I think what really needs to be championed, no matter what sport you're playing, is just to have that, you know, to really respect the people around you and make them connections because they're, they're the ones you're going to have the great memories. It's not whether you won or not. It might be nice to be able to say you won, but like the little journeys along the way and the fun and the crack, I think, is, is more important. And looking out for you, when you have them hard times as well, that there's, there's, there's people around you that's going to look out for you um, and take care of you. And I think... For me, that's that's very important um, and something that I would hold dear looking back is certainly not the trophies or the medals. It's certainly um, the journey along the way and how we got there and the way we got there with each other, I think, is uh, something that I would uh, probably put up there as, 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 as the number one. Great, yeah. Um, I say, I suppose there's not a hope of guests only getting one thing from this session because there'll be so much that people will will take from it. But I think if if there was one thing to take from it, you know, if if you were if you were asking me one thing to take from it, I think you know, there's huge power in in that care piece. I think if we if we if we did one thing in terms of coaching or managing and and we cared for our players, I think we would we would go a long way. And I and I suppose I'm going to finish maybe in a question to you in terms of another aspect of your life and I know you're you know you're involved in a business setting as well um you know from your point of view do you see similarities there in terms of you know high performance or you know that caring nature and that in, that environment in your in your world does that transfer into business as well oh I'd, absolutely I think and more and more I see it um you know, you're fixated by, you think this only should really happen in a in a sporting context and then you go into a work environment and then you kind of like, it's hard work, you got to get the job done, you got to get there, you got to do this. But like, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of kind of thinking in my own head, like there's huge similarities with the pressures involved. Um, how, and then I kind of think in my head, like this, the, the, the exact same scenarios are very, very similar. So I'd like to go to work, I go to work, I like to, I'm allow my work. I, I don't. I let's say I go to work. I don't say to the guys, "You work for me." We all work together. Like, okay, I'm at the top of the the pyramid, but I'd never tell the lads that. We all work together, and what can we do to help each other to make us better? And always encourage them, praise them. Again, if anything happens, it's I, I never see a negative content. I never give out. Mistakes do happen. But we learn from the mistakes and then get the guys to understand that 
you know, you can make mistakes and it's fine. It'd be no big deal. We just learn from them. We try not to get that, let that happen again and we move on. And again, I'm beginning to sense these similar scenarios that you'd find in a football team. And again, the coming to work and, you know, if you come to work um, and the first person you meet has a big beam and smile themselves, is really respectful of your time and effort, it's going to make their day straight away. And again, it goes back to that environment, that emotional environment. If you have interactions with really positive people, you're going to be buzzed up. You're going to give more at work. You're going to, if someone gets caught at work and needs you to stay back for an hour, you're not going to question it. You're going to do it without hesitation because you care and you know that person is going to look after you if you do that for them. So I think there's huge um, similarities across the board in that piece. But again, when you go to work, like it's, it can be, can be challenging enough, but wouldn't it be so much brilliant if everybody around you and you got energized by looking at people, being involved in a company that you're very proud of, you really enjoy the journey you're on with them. And then when you have the positive experiences and you know successes to be able to share them successes, not hog them yourself, but actually <laughs> reflect out to the people that did make it happen. And share that with them, and just um, just allowing that to happen as well, you know. And just uh, I think that's I think to me it's really important because all of us spend most of our day in a work environment. So why can't that work environment be fun, and why can't it be, you know, enjoyed? And why can't you just have them, you know, great wins along the way uh, from a nine to five context or whatever hours that people have or work with, and you know, and just being able to care for other people and I think you know like even from a coaching point of view you'd say if you went to it let's say there was an under 11 boys training session tomorrow night and you were a coach of that team and what a difference if you went to three boys that weren't the stars of the team and just took a minute out and said how great they were and what a difference then kids would feel from you giving them your time to just to tell them how great they are and sometimes that doesn't happen. In a, what a difference it would make to them kids. But it's the same in the work context. If you took the time to go to two or three employees in your workforce and just took them aside and just had, spent a couple of minutes with them, genuine minutes with them, and just really appreciated their work, and how do you think they'd make, you'd make them feel like? You'd make them feel like a million dollars. Money can't buy that. And I think, and they'd remember that as well. And I think, I'd like to think that that would be important as well in the, in a working context because, um, it's tough, tough environment at the minute, you know, in fairness, um, everybody's challenged by it, but I think we need to have each other's back and everybody needs to know there's a care piece for each other. If, if we're all up and down, you know, we can, we can count on each other to, to get across the line. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't think of a better way to, to end the session um, on, on that. I think the care piece is, you know, so powerful and it's, something that we miss maybe um in 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 pursuit of of excellence so i think uh you know i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to leave it at that declan um by thanking you um sincerely for your time um we've gone well over the time that i promised i'd keep you so uh, apologies for that but i think our listeners are going to get so much value from listening to your insights both you know from uh from your story with dublin but more so you know in my view uh your your ideas and your philosophies in terms of high performance and 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 you know i will certainly remember that care piece as as that's something i'll be bringing with me so declan thanks a million for coming on board today and supporting temple street uh, children's university hospital thank you very much Peter. it's an absolute pleasure so that's it for another session of uh, High Performance Reflections. I hope everyone um, enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, like always, uh, to access the videos, you can access them free of charge on our YouTube channel. Just search High Performance Reflections. And that will bring you to our channel. Um, and also, if you'd like to donate to our very worthy cause of Temple Street Children's University Hospital, you can do that through our GoFundMe page at GoFundMe. Um, you can search, again, High Performance Reflections, or you can get the link directly at, on the GoFundMe page or the YouTube channel. So for now, all that's left to say is goodbye. I hope you enjoyed our session, and I'm looking forward to our next session. Take care, everyone.